Yes, yes, yes. It's time for another episode of On Top and Hot with your favorite host, <laughs> John Zadar. And this is the weekend of September 27th. Now, if you watch my show through the week, you know what I do. I share a hot penny stock with you at the end of the trading day. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks every day. Stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. But on the weekends for the last month and a half, I've been giving you lessons on how to trade. I've been showing you how to find hot charts, how to set up your trades and how to make the most from those trades. Well, today I'm sharing another lesson with you, probably the absolute most critical piece of information I could share. I should have probably done this one first. We are going to talk about stop losses. Should you use them? Investors use stop loss orders as part of a disciplined strategy to exit stock positions when they're going south. Are you using them? You do know that professional traders use them all the time. A disciplined strategy, like getting into the car and clicking your seatbelt. We do it all the time. Risk management. We don't know that anything's bad is going to happen, but you set up for a worst case scenario. So we set up our trades with our entry price over top of a breakout point, supports and resistances. I'm going to presume you know what that is. We get in over those supports and resistances, climb up as the price is moving faster to the next one and get out before it bumps its head. Well, there's our exit when things go good. We got to have an exit if things go bad. And when you do research and due diligence on stop losses, they all tell you the same general information, which is correct. Your entry is above the support and your stop loss is below the support. If the price drops beneath that support, it becomes a resistance and most likely it could keep falling, but not all the time. Many, many, many times we see the price come below a resistance and just bounce and go right back up. Well, lots of people are putting their stop losses right up underneath that support resistance, but too close, not far enough away because they don't know exactly where to put it. So they just drop it down there. Price comes down, hits their stop loss or deeper and then bounces. Beautiful play. If they could have stayed in, they would have made money, but they got kicked out and they lost a little bit. They try another one. It happens again. They've lost a little bit and they could have made money. Now their confidence is being destroyed and they're losing money. So it's not just about getting your stop loss underneath the support resistance line. Where do we put it down there? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this show. Now, one of the most important things outside of saving your assets <laughs> is eliminating your emotions, folks. By having exits when things go good and exits when things go bad, we don't have to make any decisions in the heat of the moment. We have a plan. We're just going to follow our plan. And without those emotions getting involved, we have better control over our trades. Now, if you're not using stop losses, I've got to ask you why professionals use them in all of their trades, right? Why shouldn't we be using them? Especially, are you ready for this? Since stop losses are free. Well, of course they're free, but think about it for a minute. A stop loss is essentially a no cost insurance policy. You don't have to pay to protect your assets, right? So you might as well use it. If you can get out earlier, get out earlier. You've always got control. As a matter of fact, even with a stop loss in place, you should be watching your stock because not all cases is your stop loss going to actually go into effect. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, just so nobody's confused, a stop loss order does not protect you from losing a trade. <laughs> I wish it did. It protects you from losing too much money in a trade that's gone bad. Now let's take a look at a few reasons why you would want to use a stop loss though. Honestly, I'm hard pressed to think of any good reason why you wouldn't want to use a stop loss. How about the number one reason protection against adverse market movements happens all the time. The stock goes where we didn't think it was going to go, or we had our heads turned or it just moved too fast. A stop loss order helps safeguard your investment by automatically closing a trade. If the market moves against you beyond a predetermined threshold. So you get in at a dollar, you don't want to lose any more than 10%, 10 cents. So you set your stop loss at 90 cents. The stock drops down to 89 cents. You're out of there. It has kicked you out. You're not going to lose any more money. 
but it could easily bounce at 89 cents when you had your stop loss at 90 and then take off and you're out of a good trade because your stop loss wasn't in the right place. Disciplined risk management is another benefit. A well-defined stop loss strategy allows you to determine the maximum amount of capital you're willing to risk on a trade. By adhering to predetermined stop loss levels, you maintain consistency in your approach, avoiding emotional decisions that can lead to impulsive or irrational trading. Every single trade, you should know how much you might lose and how much you might gain. That's called a risk to reward ratio. And you can't do it unless you know what your entry is, your exit is when it's good, and your exit is when it's bad. And then you can see if it fits your strategy. Preservation of capital is number one, folks. You can't trade tomorrow if you don't have money today. Think of it like a soldier. His primary objective is to eliminate the enemy, but his primary priority is to stay alive. Don't do that and you can't meet your objective. It's the same thing us, with us in trading. We have to save our money for tomorrow. Protect that money. Do you know that Warren Buffett's number one rule in trading is do not lose money. I'm not joking, folks. That is the priority in trading. Keep your money. Limit your losses. Elimination of emotional bias. Trading decisions driven by emotions often lead to poor outcomes. Fear, greed, overconfidence can cloud the judgment and result in irrational trading behavior. A stop-loss order removes the need for constant monitoring and decision-making, reducing emotional interference. This automated risk management tool allows you to stick to your predetermined trading plan and avoid making impulsive decisions based on short-term market fluctuations. And that's primary here, folks. You don't want to make decisions while you're in the trade. You want all your decisions made before. Just like planning a trip, you know what entrance ramp you're getting on the highway on, you know what exit you're getting off. You don't just get on there and hope to get to where you're going. And the last one we got here is flexibility in trade execution. A stop loss order can be executed as a market order, ensuring that it is filled at the best available price once the stop loss level is reached. Now, let me explain this to you folks. There are two ways you can put in a stop loss order, a market order. That is the standard stop loss order. You put it in at 90 cents. It is triggered when the price hits 90 cents, but that's not what it's going to sell it to you at in most cases. It's going to sell it to you at the next price that comes available. It's been turned on and it will sell as soon as someone buys it. That's the key. Somebody has to buy it. Just because you have a sell order doesn't mean it's going to go right? So if the price starts falling really fast and it goes from a dollar to 80 cents during that fall, there may not have been one person who wanted to buy that stock. No way. They're doing something horrible. They're going bankrupt. They're doing a reverse stock split, something, and it's just falling. Well, if there's nobody to buy your order, you're stuck and it is going to fall, 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 and you're going to be losing money all the way along the way. So I always say back up your stop losses, with your own finger. Make sure that you can get out of that trade if it does not happen. Now you can set up a limit order. You can say, I want to sell this for 90 cents and not one penny less. That's all I want to do. Well, again, you've got to have a buyer. If nobody bids 90 cents, it's not going to sell. But there is a way around that. You have a broker. You can use your broker. You can pay them a commission, a fee, and they will buy those shares for you. If the stock drops down to 90 cents, they'll make that purchase for you. And then you buy them back from them. So there are ways to work around this. But the bottom line here, folks, is you want your stop loss in the right place. You want it where the stock is going to fall, not bounce. So let's take a look at a basic example of where you should be putting your stop losses in most circumstances. Generally speaking, this is correct, but I'm going to show you more specific answers by looking at real charts we played last week in Penny Boys. I'm over there in Penny Boys every day now between 9.30 and 4, and we are trading with anybody who shows up, including you. Just go on down to the description. It says, this is Penny Boys link. Click that. 
come on in, go to the free members page. Look for Stock Wizards. That's me. We're trading together in there, folks. We're looking for hot stocks. We are setting up the trades. We are working together and making money. And I invite you to come in. Now, let's say you come in and we've got a hot stock we're looking at. This one right here. She's got a ton of volume before the bell. So we want to get in. Bell goes off and she takes off like a rocket. Moves too fast. We couldn't get in. Do not chase the stock, folks. I know you wanted to get into this, but don't chase it. Wait for this to run out of fuel, hit its head on some resistance, and fall back to a support. We'll come back and regauge it later. Now, we're going to watch this stock because right now we see the volume is falling. When the volume falls away, so does volatility, which means your price action is disappearing. Not a scalp by any means, but keep it on your watch list because if volume comes back in, like right here, it could be worthy of a play. Now, this is negative volume. That's all selling. We don't care. Volume is volume. Who knows what these sellers are going to do? They may push that price down to a point that makes it very attractive to buyers who come in and start buying up as they did right here. Before the breakout, you can see the volume coming back in. So you're thinking, ah, this may take off. So you get your supports and resistances. You go above the resistance that you're underneath. Find a price up there. There's your entry. Find an exit when things go good, just underneath the other resistance. And then get yourself an emergency exit in case things go bad. And of course, that is going to go underneath the support that your entry is on. But is it in the right place? It could dip all the way down to these bars down here and then bounce. You'd be kicked out and it would be off and running, taking gains and you got a loss. So we've got to know where to put these stop losses, folks. And the truth of the matter is there are three ways you can place these. You can put them out there based on how much you want to lose, a set percentage or a set price. But that's a very arbitrary number. Maybe you only want to lose 10%, but where does that 10% fall on the chart? It may not be a good spot. You can also set it up by using supports and resistances, which I'm going to show you. You can also set them up using moving averages, which are just like supports and resistances, except they're moving around the chart. I'm going to show you that as well. So I've got three examples right now to show you that we actually played last week. Let's go see what I got. So we have swung on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim, where I've got three prime examples to share with you on where to set your stop loss. We're going to get all three of these from the same ticker on the same day, ticker C-A-P-R, but they are all uniquely different. Now we're going to do all of this charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Now we played ticker C-A-P-R at Penny Boys all last week, and you can see why. She was running for many a day. Then she took this huge drop and just started going sideways. But look at all the bumps and jumps and the moving through these yellow horizontal lines, which are my SNRs, my supports and resistances. These are opportunities to take money, folks. And right here, we had three beautiful opportunities, all different. We had a pre-market play here at the bell. We then had a real nice meaty play right here in the middle of the day. And then at the end of the day, we had one just to cap it off and make us feel good. So it was a hot day. Let's take a look at the first one that came pre-market. So we saw this thing running. She was hitting her head, coming down, hitting the floor, hitting her head, going in this channel between two S and R's. Well, when she came down here and started to roll around just before the bell, we seen this big bar. That big bar, she broke through her 50-day SMA. Now, these are resistances. Moving averages are resistances too if you're underneath them. They can be supports if you're on top. And she can move through these relatively easy. But these big bars tell me that she's excited about breaking through. Then we had another one going through the 20. A huge bar and she actually went through our support and through that 200-day MA. So this is when we started setting up our play really quick. We found our entry above that strong support and above that 200. You don't want to get your entry underneath the 200. You could easily bump your head on it and just come right back down. So we got it above that. However, we are not expecting a breakout here. We knew that from the get-go. We were expecting a big push up and then come right back down. Why do I say that? Because our 200-day MA is falling downhill. 
99% of the time, you do not get a breakout on a falling 200. When it's level or climbing, yes. Falling, no. But you do get big breakthroughs that come back down. And you can grab those gains as they're given. It's a quick play, but it's an honorable play. So we got into this. She broke through. Our entry was made. We got our shares. She started to climb. It was looking so good. We were closing in on our target, which was about a hundred dollar play between these two supports and resistances is 15 cents. You got to come down a little for your target to get out and you got to come up a little for your entry to get in. So you lost about a nickel six cents here. So we had about nine to 10 cents. Well, if you buy a thousand shares of any stock, it doesn't matter the price. Every penny that stock moves is going to make you $10. So we had nine to 10 cents here. That was going to make us 90 to a hundred dollars, but we still needed our stop loss. We got to know how much we're willing to lose and is it worth it? Well, our stop loss needs to be underneath the support that our entry is on. We got it right there. But is there a better place to put it or can we just put it anywhere? Well, I always like to get an edge if I possibly can. So where did I get my edge here? Well, I came over here and I looked at these three bars right there that were pushing towards this support. We had one that tagged it, one that got close, and then one that was way down here. I took the middle one. It's just an edge, folks. It's not a guarantee anything. So I put my line on the very top of this bar right there. And then I put my red stop loss underneath that. I felt good with that. So everything was set up. We got into it. She broke through. We got our shares. She started to run. It was all looking good. We were going to get our 90 to hundred bucks. And then look what happened. She stopped rising just a little bit before our target. She stopped rising. Now there's nothing to say you can't sell right now, but a lot of people didn't and it started to fall and it kept falling and kept falling. And oh my God, it went from $10 and 30 cents down to $9 and five cents. That is a dollar 25 fall. Now here's the thing folks. When it started to fall, nobody was interested in buying these shares. Nobody's stop loss engaged. It didn't work. I told you folks, this is not a hundred percent guarantee. So if you're scalping, if you're day trading, do not do any leisurely activities. Don't go to the bathroom. Honestly, folks, you don't want to walk away from your trade. You don't want to be talking to somebody. Things can change in a heartbeat. Look at how fast that fell. Five, 10, 15 minutes. We were already down a buck and a quarter. And if you weren't here to manually get out of this, you would have been holding a huge loss and been really, really upset. So always be the backup to your stop loss. You don't know that it's actually going to go. Most cases it does, but not all of them. I don't know if anybody in the group got hit with this. I don't think so because I would have heard it. When you have that much pain, you hear somebody crying. A few people lost a little more than they wanted to, but I think everybody got out of this in time. Now let's take a look at a great play. This was a meaty play we had in the middle of the day, folks. The reason I call it meaty is because of that spread between this SNR and this SNR up here is 60 cents, 60 cents. That's a $600 play. But of course you got to come down a little and you got to come up a little. So take off a dime. You've got 50 cents there. This is a $500 play if we can catch it and play it right. And you do not want to get stop lost out of this play, do you? It goes up and makes $500 and you got kicked out. Oh my God, is that going to ruin your day? So we're looking at this stock. We see that she had this big fall. She came back up onto this strong support and she's rolling around, bouncing around. Well, if she comes down to a low spot and starts to give us some push up, we can get in here. We can see that she has got three confirmation bars and she's ready to go. So somewhere in this area above our support, we are going to get our entry. We're going to try to get in probably over this 20 and watch her climb over the rest of them. And as you can see, she did climb. She climbed nicely, just went through every MA until she got all the way up here. And there was our target. We got our target, no problem. But where did our stop loss go? Right? We didn't know she was going to climb. We had to protect our assets. So I picked a stop loss based on this fall 
right there. I didn't want to go down that deep because that's just too much. That's way too deep. So I picked this one. She came down here and bounced back up right to our support here. So I picked this as my stop loss right here. And then I went underneath it. You only pick a point that is a strong breakaway point. I feel if she comes underneath this point, she's gone. But she could easily bounce on that point. So don't put it there. Put it underneath like you do right there. This time we didn't have to engage it. We didn't even get close to it. Not even close. We had that nice gain of $500, folks. This was a beautiful, beautiful play. Now, of course, when you're looking at all of your plays, you should be looking at your oscillators. They give you clues if everything is climbing. Every single line in the board, your oscillators are pushing up. Your MAs are pushing up. You have a very strong likelihood of this stock running. And don't get greedy. Take a probable move from here to there. If it's going to go to the next one, sell half or 75% and then let the rest go up. But always sell something. Stick to your plan. Now let's take a look at the last play of the day. This came on the heels of the play we had just made. It had hit her head here on that support. She fell back down, but not far. She went right to our nine day SMA on the five minute chart and that started the climb. Our nine day was climbing, our 20 day is climbing, the 50 and the 200 haul. Everything looks like it's gonna continue to climb. We're setting up our trade. So right here, we look for an entry over the support as well as over that 200-day MA. Again, you got to be over both. We got our exit when things go good up here underneath our support. And then we've got a stop loss here. Now, where did I get this stop loss? Well, I'm going to back this out to show you. I went all the way back here to pre-market to get this stop loss. This is how I primarily look I mean, you can't always find this, but this is what I look for first. I look for when the stock dips underneath the support I'm putting my entry over. I want to see how far it normally dips underneath that strong support. How far down does it come? I'm putting my stop loss under that last bounce if it's within the realms. So this came all the way down to here. Follow that yellow line. There's my stop loss way down here. It is a ways down, but... To me, I was thinking I wanted to be a little further down than to take a loss, you know, because we did take a loss on this one. Nobody really got lucky on this, and that's bound to happen, folks. You can't win all of them. But if you win four out of six, two, uh, two out of three, you're going to do okay, folks. Just win more often than you lose, and you're not going to go broke. I guarantee it. doesn't matter how much you're winning. It's not about how much. It's about how often. So we've got everything set up here now. She broke out. We had our entry made. She started the climb and she did it. Just a little bit after the bell, she continued climbing. She didn't slow down at all, actually sped up a bit. And just after the bell, we closed our deals out and then our day was over. And this was a run from 985 up to 1015. That was the $200 play. So we had a play here we lost a little bit on. Everybody lost a little bit different. There, this was a $500 play, and this is a $200 play. Two out of three. We lost one. We won two. Maybe lost $70 here, and you won $700 here. Not a bad day at all. You get my drift? So the whole point here is you just don't want to get into any trade that looks like it's ready to run. It's got to fit your ratio. How much do you want to gain? Do you want to make $3 for every dollar you put down here? You may be down 10 cents. You want to make at least 30 cents profit for every 10 cents down you are. You want to make more so you can cover your losses. That's the whole point. The more often you win, you're not only making gains, but you're covering losses from the past. Very quick and easy, folks. So hopefully I've shared something here with you about setting your stop losses in the most appropriate place you can. We can't always know, but try to get out of the bounce zone. That's the bottom line. Look for any bounces that come under that support and get your stop loss underneath them. You'll lose a lot less trades this way, folks. I promise you. You can go do some more research, as I always suggest, but you're going to probably see there's not a lot of information out there, not even as much as I just told you. So hopefully, I've given you something of value. 
Something that's not only going to help you make money, but save money that you could have lost. That's quite important, folks. Thanks for sharing your time with me. I'll talk to you again. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.